Good morning. And welcome to the christening of the United States Naval Ship Cherokee Nation, our nation's newest Navajo class towing, salvage, and rescue ships. I am Jeffrey Green, Executive Vice President of Government and External Affairs of Bollinger Shipyards. On behalf of the 3,500 men and women of Bollinger Shipyards, it is my great honor to welcome those of you who are here with us today and joining us across the nation through live stream. We will begin our program today with an opening song by Cherokee Nation National Treasurer Tommy Wildcat. Osio, Tohe Jan Nagada. Bro. Thank you, Tommy. Will the guests please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the honors, the presentation of colors, the national anthem, the Pledge of Allegiance, and the invocation. Commander Jeffrey Perry, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy, Command Chaplain of the future USS Bougainville. Ms. Jana Polzin, Deputy Program Manager, Auxiliary and Special Mission Shipbuilding Program. Ms. Kaylee Wrencher, Matron of Honor. <laughs> Captain Leonard Cannon, United States Navy, Executive Officer, Supervisor of Shipbuilding Gulf Coast. Captain Jamie Murdoch, United States Navy, Commander, Military Sealift Command, Atlantic. Mr. Richard Murphy, Vice President of Government Program Management, Bollinger Shipyards.
Rear Admiral Thomas Anderson, United States Navy, Program Executive Officer, Ships. The Honorable Joe Crittenden, Secretary of Veterans Affairs, Cherokee Nation. <laughs> Lieutenant General Lynn Anderson, United States Marine Corps, Commander, U.S. Marine Corps Forces Reserve and U.S. Marine Corps Forces South. Vice Admiral Scott Gray, United States Navy, Commander, Navy Installations Command. The Honorable Chuck Hoskin, Jr., Principal Chief of the Cherokee Nation and our Principal Speaker. The Honorable Franklin Parker, Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Manpower and Reserve Affairs. Our ship sponsor, the Honorable Victoria Vasquez, escorted today by Mr. Ben Bordelon, President and CEO of Bollinger Shipyards. Ladies and gentlemen, the Navy Band Southeast will now render honors to the Honorable Franklin Parker. Color Guard, advance the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem.
The Pledge of Allegiance will be delivered by Mr. Richard Murphy. Good morning. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Color Guard, retire the colors. Commander Perry will now deliver the invocation. Good morning. Please join with me in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, the one who is in all things and ever present, we ask for your blessing today as we commence with this time-honored tradition. In this moment, as we bear witness to the christening of TATS 7, allow her to take on the qualities and the culture of her namesake, the Cherokee Nation. The Cherokee Nation are a people who are known for long enduring resilience, their strength of character, and a wise people in this world you have created. May these characteristics always mark the service of this ship and her crew. As she provides support of fleet operations, may she always carry out her mission with pride while keeping her crew safe throughout her service life. Bless her in such a way as to bring honor to the Cherokee Nation and to the United States Naval Sea Service. May the breaking of the bottle, the offering of the wine, bestow good luck and safe passage. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Perry. Will the guests please be seated? Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a round of applause for the, Na the Naval Mobile Construction Battalion 133 Color Guard and Navy Band Southeast for joining us today. We are honored to have in the audience several other members of the Cherokee Nation who have traveled a great distance to be with us today. Will each of you please stand as I call your name? Mrs. January Hoskins, First Lady of the Cherokee Nation. The Honorable Chuck Hoskins Sr., former Oklahoma State Representative and former Mayor of Venita, Oklahoma. The Honorable Corey Bunch, Chief of Staff of the Cherokee Nation. The Honorable Dora Patskowski, member, Cherokee Nation, Tribal Council, 12th District. The Honorable Joe Deere, member, Cherokee Nation, Tribal Council, 13th District. The Honorable Johnny Kidwell, member, Cherokee Nation, Tribal Council at Large. And would all citizens of the Cherokee Nation please stand to be recognized. Please join me in welcoming some special guests in the audience today as well. Ms. Caroline Terrio, Regional Representative, Office of Senator John Kennedy. Thank you. The Honorable Jason Bajeron, President, Terrebonne Parish. The Honorable John Amade, Terrebonne Parish Council. Ms. Catherine Gilbert Terrio, Director of Business Retention and Expansion, Terrebonne Economic Development Authority. The Honorable Laura Ann Chasson, Principal Chief of the United Home and Nation. 
Ms. Paula Nira, sponsor of the USNS Harvey Milk, representing the Society of Ship Sponsors. Our state, regional, and local elected officials and community leaders and their representatives, if, if I didn't get to mention you, please stand to be recognized. Thank you. Our partners and customers of the Navy's PMS 325 Program Office and the Supervisor of Shipbuilding Gulf Coast. Our teammates at the Military Sealift Command who will own and operate this vessel. Thank you. And finally, please help me welcome our Bollinger Shipbuilders in the audience today. This includes welder Annabelle Crispo. Annabelle participated in the keel layering ceremony in February of 2020, etching the initials of Deputy Speaker Vasquez and Chief Hoskin into the keel plate. Would you please stand? <laughs> the collective strength and commitment to excellence of our shipbuilders lives in each and every Bollinger built vessel. So thank you all. It is now my pleasure to introduce our president and CEO of Bollinger Shipyards, Mr. Ben Bordelon. How's everybody doing? Welcome to Louisiana. Nice heat. Welcome to Terrebonne Parish. Welcome to Homa. Uh, very glad to have you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed officers, uh, honored guests, members of South Louisiana community, again, welcome. Uh, it is with great pride uh, that I welcome all of you uh, to Bollinger Homa to christen the USNS Cherokee Nation. Very special day for, for many, um, and I'm glad all of you are here to witness it. This isn't just any ship. This is a Bollinger-built Navajo-class towing salvage rescue ship manufactured to the highest level of craftsmanship and quality for the brave men and women of the United States Navy, who day in and day out serve and defend this great nation of ours. Today we honor and recognize the profound sacrifices and commitment of the Cherokee Nation to our country. This ship will bear the name and spirit of the Cherokee people. For over two centuries, the Cherokee people have shown an unwavering commitment to the defense and protection of the United States. From early American conflicts to modern day military engagements, Cherokee warriors have consistently demonstrated courage, loyalty, and a strong sense of duty. Their warrior spirit deeply embedded in their culture and traditions has enriched our military and the fabric of our nation. It is that spirit that will carry with the ship forward and inspire its crew. Every weld, every beam, every system on this ship was crafted with the thought of the warriors that inspired its name and extraordinary sailors who will navigate her through calm and storm alike. Our vision has always been clear, to lead in shipbuilding industry by upholding unmatched standards of safety, quality, and craftsmanship. This is not just any standard, it's the Bollinger Standard. And this ship is designed and built to that standard so that its sailors can operate with confidence, even in the harshest environments. It is an honor beyond words for Bollinger Shipyards to partner with the Navy and contribute to its legacy. The trust bestowed upon us to construct a new class of vessels is both a responsibility and more importantly, a privilege that we hold dear. On that note, let me take a moment to acknowledge our team of skilled men and women that have worked tireless on the USNS Cherokee Nation. Your expertise, dedication, brought the USNS Cherokee Nation to life. And to our South Louisiana community, our partners, our suppliers, without your partnership and unwavering support, today would have never happened. Thank you again to all who have traveled to be here and for joining us in celebrating this landmark tradition. It's really going to be a fun day. I know it's a little warm, um, but it's, a, it's going to be a memorable day for everyone. So I'm glad to be a part of it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ben. It is now my pleasure to introduce Vice Admiral Scott Gray, Commander, Navy Installations Command. Thank you. 
appreciate it. Well, welcome, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, honored members of the Cherokee Nation, Bollinger Shipyard executives and shipbuilders, partners in the defense industry, fellow war fighters, and distinguished guests. It is my privilege to represent the Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Lisa Franchetti, at this christening of the newest vessel of the Navajo class, the USNS Cherokee Nation. Among today's many distinguished guests, I want to offer a special welcome to the Cherokee Nation sponsor, the Honorable Victoria Vasquez, as well as the Honorable Chuck Hoskins, Jr., Principal Chief of the Cherokee Nation. On behalf of the Chief of, Chief of Naval Operations, I extend a personal and special thank you to you and to your family and to the Cherokee Nation for letting an America's Navy share in your community's unshakable legacy of service through the naming of this sailing ship in her honor, in your honor. Today's ceremony is a testament to the Navy's continued partnership with the Cherokee Nation. This is the fifth U.S. Navy ship in 165 years named for the Cherokee, honoring the Cherokee men and women who have served our armed forces with distinction. The USNS Cherokee Nation and other Navajo class vessels are multi-purpose powerhouse vessels. These ships replace two classes of, addition, of uh, earlier vessels, the Powhatan class Fleet Ocean Tugs, commissioned in the late 70s, and the Safeguard class Rescue and Salvage ships, which were commissioned in the 80s and are now approaching the end of their service life. U.S. Navy's towing, salvage, and rescue ships serve a number of essential functions. Salvage and manned diving work, such as performing underwater uh, submarine rescue or providing heavy lift capabilities to recover downed uh, aircraft or vessels at, from the ocean's death. Search and rescue. In the past, these ships have been called on uh, to support notable events around the world, such as, such as the 2011 uh, J Japan earthquake and tsunami as well as uh, the sinking of a motor vessel off of uh, South Korea in 2014. They support oil spill in response, ocean cleanup, they provide firefighting assistance, and they render aid, tow, and can uh, de-beach stranded and inoperable vessels. The USNS Cherokee Nation, the second of 10 Navajo class ships being commissioned, is a multi-mission common hull platform that will support an even broader range of missions than its predecessor vessels. Of course, they will do towing and rescue and salvage, but also are capable of executing humanitarian assistance and wide area search using unmanned uh, underwater vehicles and unmanned aerial vehicles uh, to complete that mission. The, versatil the versatility of this class of ship adds immeasurably to the capabilities of the United States Navy with regard to rendering assistance for those in peril on the high seas. The new Navajo class ships will help ensure our sailors and Marines receive critical, timely support to stay in the fight around the globe and that the U.S. Navy stands ready to respond quickly if disaster strikes by providing humanitarian assistance, firefighting support, and spill response. USNS Cherokee Nation will support a mighty force that upholds the rules-based international order uh, and including freedom of navigation which support our way of life and, our, and the way of life that we have created since World War II uh, around the world. As for the future civilian mariner crew of the USNS Cherokee Nation, it is my sincere hope that they will maintain our naval forces advantage by upholding the values of honor, integrity, ingenuity, and dedication to duty. May God bless the future crew of the USNS Cherokee Nation, their families, and their many voyages to come. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vice Admiral Gray. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, the Honorable Franklin Parker, Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Manpower and Reserve Affairs. And thank you, Mr. Green. And good morning, everyone. It is my honor and privilege to join you today. I bring you greetings from our Secretary of the Navy, the Honorable Carlos del Toro, and our entire Department of the Navy leadership team. What a great moment this is for our Navy today. Already marked by the events preceding this ceremony, 
Yeah, I'd like to extend a special thank you to our Navy brand, our Navy band, Southeast Brass Quartet, um, for their outstanding performance this morning. So everyone, this is a moment to celebrate. And celebrate, we really should. This morning, we christen a key multi-mission capable platform, demonstrating and extending our maritime dominance capabilities. In this moment, we will also send a message to our adversaries that we will maintain our competitive edge and our operational readiness in every domain. Today, we mark the transition of more than 5,000 metric tons of steel into the latest state-of-the-art surface vessel available to the Navy's fleet, a ship that brings capabilities and versatility to support an expansive range of missions as diverse as our Navy itself, from critical towing to rescue and salvage to humanitarian assistance to wide area search and surveillance operations around the world. She's exceptionally capable, a force multiplier that enables our Navy to support and defend our great nation, to advance the national defense strategy, and to strengthen our ability to maintain a worldwide presence with our partners. This 262-foot work of art is a testament to the incredible shipyard workers here in HOMA, as well as others around the country who are instrumental in providing the critical components of the USNS Cherokee Nation and its systems. These artisans, a multitude of civilian engineers, technicians, builders, and systems experts, were all fundamental to the production, transforming masses of steel into a modern marvel. Collectively, they worked together to ensure her crew has the most agile, ready, and capable platform both to execute their mission and, most importantly, to return home safely. This collaboration is yet another example of the essential cooperation between our Navy military, civilian, and industrial partners, who together design, construct, maintain, and enable all the vessels of our maritime force. Ms. Victoria Vasquez, sponsor of the USNS Cherokee Nation, you will forever hold a special relationship with this ship and her crew, a connection that endures throughout the life of this ship and all who sail her. It is a pleasure to welcome you and your granddaughter, the matron of honor, Ms. Kaylee Beth Rencher today. Thank you both for sharing this day with us. I also want to recognize the Honorable Chuck Haskin, Principal Chief of the Cherokee Nation, and First Lady, Ms. January Haskin, the Honorable Stanley Joe Crittenden. There, there, there you go. Honorable Stanley Joe Crittenden. Secretary of Veterans Affairs for Cherokee Nation and all the great work that you're doing, which I know we had a chance to talk about a bit last night. And the members of the Cherokee Nation Tribal Council and all the proud citizens of the Cherokee Nation. I am personally and deeply humbled and honored to share this special day with each and every one of you and all the members of the Cherokee Nation. This week marks the 100th anniversary of the Indian Citizenship Act, which finally recognized citizenship for all Native peoples born in this land. Yet even before you were formally recognized as U.S. citizens, the people of the Cherokee Nation have consistently and steadfastly answered the call to service. In doing so, you embody the warrior spirit and the Navy ethos, defending our shores with honor, courage, and commitment, and through your enduring example of true strength and resilience. Shipbuilding and capabilities have changed since the Navy christened its first ship in 1797. What remains consistent is the unwavering commitment to all who are involved in the life of a Navy ship the people, the shipbuilders, the artisans, the contractors, the civilians, the sailors, the families, and the community members. Thank you all for making today a reality. And to the USNS Cherokee Nation, 
and the brave individuals who will sail her in the, days, in the days ahead. At every turn, as you defend our nation, we wish you fair winds, following seas, and a safe return home. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Parker. And now it is my great honor to introduce our principal speaker, the Honorable Chuck Hoskin, Jr., Principal Chief of the Cherokee Nation. Get this microphone down to an average height. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor and a privilege to be with you today. This is uh, a city, home of Louisiana, that now holds a special place in my heart. Uh, this is a place that uh, my wife and I, our first lady, visited years ago when the keel was laid. That was a special kind of ceremony. This is a special kind of gathering. Homa reminds me of things that are special. This is a special kind of Navy ship. And this is a special kind of heat. You've got to understand our people have not adapted to this heat. But if you keep inviting us back to Homa, then we'll get used to it because we love this city and we love this place and we love what we're here to celebrate. I'm particularly appreciative of the Cherokee Nation representatives who could be here today, members of our council. I know they've been introduced, a member of my cabinet, our chief of staff, uh, the staff that's here sharing this with us and many people watching back home, everyone is excited about this event. I mentioned our First Lady January, one of the first visits that we made together after uh, the first term of office started was here. And that set an incredible tone for what was to come because it reminded us about Cherokee Nation's place and its prominent place in this country and the short time that she and I have to serve, how important that is. It's also particularly special to me that my two favorite, well, let's say three favorite veterans, my father, Chuck Hoskin, who served in the Navy. By the way, he began his service in the Navy 54 years ago this week. We appreciate that. Our Secretary of Veterans Affairs, I always love to share a stage with him, and I'm appreciative that he is here. And Councilman Johnny Jack Kidwell, who's very special in terms of his service to the country, and he's special to my family. And I just am glad to share the stage with veterans. That's particularly important to me. The heat, though, is not what is most on my mind today. What's most on my mind today is what this ship means to the Cherokee people and to the chief of the Cherokee Nation. And I think what it stands for in terms of its inextricable link to the Cherokee people from this day forward, as long as she sails, is resilience and its service and its friendship. Now, in terms of resilience, I think it's remarkable, not for me personally to be on this stage, but for any chief of the Cherokee Nation to be on this stage in 2024, if you know a little something about our history. There were times in the history of the last 500 years since European contact when some folks counted us out and some folks were planning for us to be counted out. There were times when we were up against the wall and it didn't look like we had much of a future. But the Cherokee people are tough and we are resilient, and throughout that period of time, including since the founding of this country, when there was a great many dark and difficult chapters, including our forced removal, along what's known today as the Trail of Tears, there were times when anyone would have had their doubt that a Cherokee nation would exist in 2024 as anything more than a footnote in history. But we are every day, and certainly today, not a footnote in history. We're making history. And that's part of the resilience of the Cherokee people. And that's why we're still here. And so anytime I get to take the stage in an event like this, I'm reminded of 
how incredibly against the odds it is that a Cherokee nation is here, that we are a sovereign nation able to exercise our democracy, by the way, one of the oldest democracies on the planet, and that we get to celebrate such an occasion. It's because of the resilience of our ancestors. And that resilience, I assure you, is still in place today. And that's why I can tell you we're doing some incredible things at the Cherokee Nation. But it's all born of that sense that we belong, that we've got the audacity to exist, particularly when times are tough. We just got tougher. And here we are. So resilience is what's on my mind today as I think about an event like this. The other thing I think about is service. It's been mentioned, but Cherokee people and the Cherokee Nation as an ally have served with this country and for this country in every conflict or war since the United States Civil War. Consistently, the Cherokee Nation has been there, whether it was to preserve the Union or whether it was Decades later, in World War I, now think about this. In the Civil War, the soldiers who were Cherokee, within their living memory, within their living memory was the forced removal that I mentioned to you before, the Trail of Tears. And yet, they served. In World War I, within the living memory of those soldiers who signed up, for the different branches of service of the United States military, within their living memory was the near destruction of that great democracy I mentioned to you before, that sovereign nation that I mentioned to you before, at the hands of the United States and the imposition of a new state upon our lands and the allotment of our lands. Within their living memory was that chapter in history, and yet they served. And throughout the rest of time till today, Cherokee people have served men like Johnny Jack Kidwell, men like my father, men like Secretary of Veterans Affairs S. Joe Crittenden, and so many more actually in disproportionate numbers to our population, which is true across Native peoples in this country. All of that has always struck me as incredible and powerful, that Cherokee people were moved to serve, even though there were those dark chapters. I think part of the reason is because the principles on which this country was founded and what she represents on her best day and what she achieves on her greatest days is something that's universal across humanity and it's certainly something the Cherokee people believe in. Freedom, the ability to exercise our liberties, the, busy, the ability to dream and achieve those dreams as individuals, the ability to have a free government like the democracy that is the Cherokee Nation. We believed in that, and our people were willing to fight and die, and many did. So service is on my mind as I think about uh, this ship. And finally, friendship is on my mind. Uh, because even though there have been dark chapters in the story of the United States and the Cherokee Nation, the history of those two nations, and even though that history ought to be talked about, and I've mentioned some of it, and there's a great deal more we ought to talk about in this country, and we ought to remember, even though there are those dark chapters, and make no mistake, there is a friendship. The United States is the oldest partner that the Cherokee Nation has. We have a government-to-government -government relationship that dates back to the founding of this country, through treaties, through other agreements. We've got a relationship that has stood the test of time. And yes, there's been some dark and difficult chapters, but today in this century, the story is one of friendship, of working together, of what we can achieve as Americans together, and what we as Cherokee people can contribute to this country. And I think we can contribute a great deal. And so when I think of this ship for the rest of my life, and when I think of what this ship is doing, in defense of this country, and I think of the name that she bears, and I think of this event with all of you, I think that this ship stands for now and will always stand for in the minds of the Cherokee people, and certainly in the mind of this Cherokee, resilience, service, and friendship. And I've been glad just to bear witness to a little part of it. Thank you all very much. What
Thank you, Chief Hoskin. And now it is my honor to introduce our ship sponsor, the Honorable Victoria Vasquez, Deputy Speaker of the Cherokee Nation Tribal Council. Deputy Speaker Vasquez was elected to the Tribal Council in 2013 and is serving her third consecutive term. She has twice been elected by her council peers to serve as the Deputy Speaker. Inspired by her mother to make traditional pottery, she has exhibited her craft at native art markets across the country, and her artwork is currently displayed at the Smithsonian's National Museum of the Native American Indian. In 2012, Deputy Speaker Vasquez received this extraordinary honor being named Cherokee National Treasurer by her tribe. Victoria, thank you very much for being here today. You can Hey, I'm the same height as a microphone. I love it when that happens. I, um, I feel like, to, oh, first let me just say, I am thrilled, proud, and happy to be here. And I feel like I represent not just my mom and my family and uh, outstanding native females, but all females that are here and that are serving and that have gone before us, our ancestors and those who have served in the military. I just feel uh, like I represent more than the tribe and more than my family, but um, I'm just deeply moved. It's been an, an astounding, has it only been 24 hours, I think? Um, yesterday, I got to uh, tour the ship and that was a wonderful experience. Got to practice with the uh, champagne bottles, so I pray that I will not embarrass anyone with my second um, crack. But I wanted to say, where's Tommy? There's Tommy. CO Tommy. Thank you for being here. CO is uh, hello in Cherokee, so hello to you all. Um, it is a great honor to be asked to serve as a ship sponsor for the USNS Cherokee Nation. Many people from the Cherokee Nation and from the US Navy brought me to this moment, as well as my God. I'm, I'm thankful that God has led me to this moment in my life. And there's no way for me to name everyone that has helped me. Probably most of them I haven't even met, but I will because I uh, have a lifetime relationship. I'm a sponsor for life, and I hope I have lots of good years left uh, after my tenure on the Tribal Council to go visit my ship in different places and visit the crew. So I have lots to look forward to. A few I can and will acknowledge, even though you might have heard some of their names before, starting with our former Chief Bill John Baker, who called me in the spring of 2019, asking me to represent our tribe as a ship sponsor. I really didn't have a clue. I didn't know what that entailed. And I'm learning more by the hour what it entails, and it's all very exciting. But when he called me, I, I didn't know much about it, and I said, well, yes, of course I'll serve. After that, I received a letter from the uh, Secretary of the Navy at the time, Mr. Richard Spencer. I thank you, sir, for that. Fast forward to February 12th, 2020, when our current Principal Chief, Chuck Hoskin Jr., and I made our first trip to Homa for the Lane of the Keel. At that time, I also met Alicia Odnison, and she is the Ship Introduction Specialist and has been most helpful, has her staff, Debbie Simmons from the Navy, and then Sadie Bro, representing Bollinger. She's also been a big help and arranged a beautiful dinner for us to attend last night. Also, um, oh, well, I'll get to them later. Um, so after the, the kill lane, the pandemic happened. And so as you all know, everything went on hold. And we um, didn't have any idea when this would happen or when it would be complete. But anyway, the ship is complete and here we are. As deputy speaker and an elected a tribal counselor, I'm in my 11th year of service, soon to be going out of office. And I have experienced many highs, but I believe that this truly tops them all. I know it does. I'm, uh, again, I'm just thrilled to be serving. I'm grateful for my family members that are here with me today. My husband, Bruce. My husband, Bruce. <laughs> Thank you. And 
my beautiful granddaughter, Kaylee Rincher, who has the honor of serving uh, with me as my matron of honor for the christening. Thank you, Principal Chief Tarkovskin, Jr., First Lady January, and um, Chuck Hoskin, you've been mentioned before. Great to see you here, thanks for coming. My fellow counselors, um, Doris Smith Pascal, Paskowski, I know how to say it. You're looking at me and laughing and you made me mess up. <laughs> Not really. Um, Joe Deere and Johnny Jack Kidwell, who also brought his father. We appreciate having all of you here. And of course, I cannot leave out Secretary of Veterans Affairs as Joe Crittenden, my friend for many years. Thank you. Also, also with Cherokee Nation communi Communications staff, led by Julie Hubbard. Thank you all for being here. I'm aware that many in attendance here today are very familiar with the sponsoring process and the sponsor's role. However, for guests who are unfamiliar, I would like to take a minute to explain, as I am truly humbled to be selected to serve. According to guidance provided by the U.S. Navy, a sponsor is named by the Secretary of the U.S. Navy and serves throughout the life of the ship, or her life, participating in all or some of the ship milestones. A sponsor serves as a mom or a sister to the ship and all the crews that serve aboard her through the, her entire life. Myself as a sister, mother, grandmother, tribal counselor, this is a task with which I am reasonably familiar and I happily accept the responsibility. When, when called to serve your community, your tribe, or our country, giving of your time and sometimes years of your life, you realize that you are serving a purpose greater than yourself. And in accepting, it's important to remember that you are not doing this alone. Your family gives as well. I want to thank my ancestors, my late father and mother, who I believe are always with us, and of course my husband and my sisters and my daughters, my tribe, my constituents, and my work family and artist community for their support in the service, in my service to the USNS Cherokee Nation and the US Navy. And more importantly, thank you all to those of you who are serving or have served in our country in the military. Uh, we, you truly understand better than anyone what it means to give. I thank you all. In closing, there are four milestones in the life of the ship one, the keel lane, which I've already experienced. The others are the christening happening today, the commissioning and decommissioning. I look forward to this lifelong, lifelong relationship with the USNS Cherokee Nation and all who will serve aboard her. Again, thank you to all who are responsible for my being selected. Wando. Thank you, Deputy, Deputy Speaker Vasquez. At this time, I would like to invite the Honorable Joe Crittenden, Secretary of Veterans Affairs for the Cherokee Nation and Navy veteran to offer a traditional prayer for the ship. Before we do that, I would like to share something with you. I felt a spirit here in this crowd today and I lost a brother in 89 to suicide. He was a Navy veteran, just like me. Served in Vietnam. When he felt a spirit, when he was moved by someone's words, oftentimes he would say one of two things, and he would say them loud. One was Peavine, because that's where we lived. And that's where a good number of our Cherokee speakers live today. And the other was glory. So on behalf of his memory, glory. This is a great happening today. I'm just glad to be here. If you would, please rise for a short prayer. Our Father, thank you for all your blessings of life. Thank you, Father, for another day for me. Thank you for the traveling grace that you 
bestowed upon us to get here today to this event, and, and we came in yesterday. As you know, <clears throat> Father, thank you for the ceremony that we were getting ready to have about this new ship. This water warrior is the syllabary uh, translates into. I know there's not many, Father, that could, uh, could transfer or, or interpret what the syllabary says today, but it's been done, and you know the language. You speak all languages. You know all things. I pray, Father, that this ceremony will go as, as uh, scheduled and that you'll bless this ship, this USNS Cherokee Nation, TATS-7, as it cruises to wherever it goes uh, on missions of rescue or no telling what might come up in the, in the days and, and months and years to come. Keep her safe. Keep those that serve, men and women, aboard her safe as they do their task, and, and as they should, as good Navy uh, personnel. Uh, thank you for the armed forces that we have represented here today also, the Marines, the Navy, and whomever else might be in the crowd. Uh, it takes all of us to protect our way of life and our democracy. And thank God that people were willing to stand in the breach, Father, and you were willing to watch over them and keep them safe. I, I thank you so much for all the blessings you give us. Uh, I thank you for the messages that we've heard from the speakers today, Father, and the spirit that's here in this tent. Uh, it's a blessing to me, and I ask for your continued blessings as we, as we tidy this event up after a bit and go back to our homes, to our families and all. Thank you, Father, and forgive us where we fail you. These things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Secretary Crittenden. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to that portion of our program that we have eagerly awaited. When our ship sponsor breaks a bottle over the bow of TATS-7 and christens her in the name of the Cherokee Nation. At this time, Mr. Bordelon will escort Deputy Speaker Vasquez, Ms. Rencher, Captain Murdoch, Chief Hoskin, Secretary Parker, to the christening platform. The christening of a ship is a time-honored tradition that goes back thousands of years. The recently constructed vessel is solemnly dedicated, named and committed to the sea. With the break of the bottle over the ship's bow, the sponsor infuses her spirit and that of the ship's namesake into the new ship. At this time, I'm gonna invite all of our guests and we can wait for a second so you don't have to be outside in the heat. I mean, there's no way to escape the heat, but at least the sun. Um, we'll walk, you can walk out to see them when they go up. It's going to take them a, a few minutes. As you're going to do so, the Navy Band Southeast will now perform God Bless America as we await the arrival of the christening party.
doing a lot this week. Deputy Speaker Vasquez, are you ready to christen this ship? Yes, I am. <laughs> kind of. Okay. Where? Let's go up to the front. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, I'm supposed to hit. Um, I mean, nowhere around there. Okay, but um, yeah. for the United States of America, I christen the Cherokee Nation. May God bless this ship and all who sail her. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. On behalf of all Bollinger Shipyards, I would like to...